Today is an exciting day because we are editing this video, this very video in Final Cut Pro on iPad. I still can't believe that I'm saying that. Apple announced they are bringing Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro to the iPad on a random Tuesday in May, and it's pretty sick. Now, I've tried using other editing programs on the iPad before, and don't get me wrong, there are great ones out there, like LumaFusion and DaVinci Resolve. But I always come back to Final Cut Pro. And this is because I got used to editing with Magnetic Timeline. Now, Magnetic Timeline adjusts clips to fit around other clips that you drag into place. And if you drag clips out of place or delete them, there's not just these big gaps or holes in your timeline. Everything in the timeline moves to fill it. Now, this is incredibly helpful for me at least because I edit way faster this way. And because I am so used to magnetic timeline, it makes it harder for me jumping into other editing programs and loving them. And because I'm attached to Final Cut Pro, married to Final Cut Pro, this means I'm also married to my MacBook and my Mac Studio. And I'm going to be honest with you, I've noticed that I do procrastinate on editing videos because I know that I need to use my computer to do so. I just love doing things on my iPad and because social media platforms are also pushing out short form content, I just found myself getting burnt out and pushed out of the main scene. And this is why I am so happy that Final Cut Pro is now on iPad. One of my favorite features of Final Cut Pro on iPad is live drawing. So if I click this pencil icon, the clip enters full screen and then I can write whatever and then it automatically does the heavy lifting for me and I get this really cool effect. I used to do this effect in my very, very early videos, but honestly, it's a pain to do and it's time consuming to animate. But with iPad, you can do it in seconds. Another feature that you can do in literal seconds because of iPad's neural engine is background scene removal. If I drag this over my clip, it will automatically remove the background so I can animate drawings or text or generate different backgrounds behind my subject. This would have resulted in a lot of keyframing, masking, and a ridiculous amount of time, but the iPad is making it easier than ever to do easier for beginner or average video editors to have very professional looking footage. Because Apple knows about short form content, everyone knows about short form content, there's this really cool auto crop feature built right into Final Cut Pro on iPad. So with machine learning, iPad will intelligently adjust footage for vertical content or other aspect ratios for that matter. So you can share your videos to multiple platforms like TikTok or YouTube Shorts. That's something that still isn't done well in Final Cut Pro on the Mac. I have to manually adjust my aspect ratios and center it on the best parts of my footage, but with iPad, it's even easier. Now I've gotten pretty fast at editing in Final Cut Pro on my Mac. It used to take me hours, but now it only takes me one to two Macs, even with lots of footage. So when I first heard that Final Cut Pro was coming to iPad, I did have this kind of far away concern in the back of my mind. I was wondering if iPad's gonna end up slowing me down. <laughs> no, because now there's this jog wheel. I can scrub through the entire timeline very quickly or even with specific clips, and I can nudge them too. The jog wheel in combination with Apple Pencil allows me to interact and connect with the timeline in a very unique way. Now, there's a whole host of features in Final Cut Pro that you would expect to see in any editing program, things like titles and transitions, effects, and they even brought over multi-cam editing so you can choose your different camera angles and synchronize everything together. 
But what if you're not a video editor or a content creator? What does Final Cut Pro on the iPad matter to you? It's not even free. Well, it is for one month at least, and then it jumps up to $4.99 a month or $50 a year, but why should you care? It means that Apple does consider the iPad to be a pro device. And then bringing Final Cut Pro or Logic Pro is another indication of this. Magic Keyboard, I would argue, is another example of Apple trying to elevate the iPad as a pro device, the hero of your workflows. So even if you aren't a video editor or a music producer or do anything that would require the usage of these apps, it's still really exciting because it means that Apple still has big plans for the iPad and the apps or programs or features that they might add in the future could be beneficial or pro level for your workflows. Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro will be available on iPad starting May 23rd, a fully featured free one month trial to start, and then it's $4.99 per month or 50 a year for each. Final Cut Pro is compatible with M1 chip iPad models or later, and Logic Pro will be available on the A12 Bionic chip iPad models or later. Both require at least iPadOS 16.4. So let me know down in the comments if you're trying out either Final Cut Pro or Logic Pro on iPad. And I'm also curious to hear your thoughts on this move from Apple. But until then, I will see you in the next one. Bye.